Hi guys, welcome to Learn Kenyan Law with Wanjiko. Um, this is going to be the platform where you get all your legal information and especially what governs us here in Kenya. So um, our first episode being commercial law, the first thing that we're going to ask ourselves is what is the definition of commercial law? What is commercial law? And the first thing you do when you want to define a word, of course, is ask yourself, where does this word come from? So the word commercial comes from the word commerce. And according to the Oxford English Dictionary, commerce is the exchange between men of the products of nature or art. Commerce is the buying and selling together. Commerce is trading. Commerce is the exchange of merchandise, especially as conducted on a large scale between different countries or districts. So the central meaning of commercial law would on this basis be the rules which control and facilitate the buying and selling of goods. So generally what we're saying is that commercial law is of a mercantile nature. It is the law of commerce. It is concerned with commercial transactions. It is a subject, of course, that is so wide because it involves different practices of the business com community. It is not a static subject because commerce, commerce continues to expand. It accommodates different areas, for example, technology. So therefore, it's very hard for us to give an exhaustive definition of commercial law. But of course, as we have said, is commercial law are the rules which control and facilitate the buying and the selling of goods. So we continue and ask ourselves, what are the type of transactions covered in commercial law? Some of I've given some few examples. Some of the few examples are equipment leasing. For example, once you want to probably lease your camera equipment to someone, it would definitely be governed by commercial law. Receivable financing, payment system, personal property security, rights to invest securities, modern technology, especially the teletransmission of trade and financial data, and the new dealings in money, commodities, and securities. So um, we, the next question we're going to ask ourselves is, what is the function of commercial law? Why do we need commercial law in our society? The first important function of commercial law is to facilitate commercial transactions. That is transaction between parties dealing with each other in the course of business. I will give you an example of a case law that is Coombe versus Watards Bank Limited, where Lord Devlin say stated as follows. <clears throat> the function of commercial law is to allow, so far as it can, commercial men to do business in the way they want to do it and not to require them to stick to forms that they might think outdated. So um, parties that are involved in a commercial transactions, of course, they have the special needs. And one of the important special needs that such parties demand are the agreement has to be upheld. This is to say, for example, if we are having a dealing, if I am selling you um, some few equipments, it is important that when we sit down and agree that you're going to deliver this equipment on the 5th of every month, you abide by that agreement. Um, the second important um, need that parties involved in commercial transaction need, they require the decisions of courts on commercial issues to be predictable. The reason why they need it to be predictable is so that they can know where do they stand. That's very important, especially with people who are in business. They need to know that the, we the law requires us to be at this point and the law requires us to do this therefore it's very important for the for commercial law to be predictable the third thing that parties that are involved in commercial transactions need they need the law to be flexible enough to take account of their latest business practices the flexibility of the law is one of the important needs that parties in commercial transactions need for example we can say like 20 years ago, conduct, uh, transact, doing transactions through M-Pesa was not something that was hard of. But right now, people are, are doing their transactions through M-Pesa. So, of course, the law has to be flexible enough to, you know, allow such business practices to happen. So, the fourth important thing that is needed um, with parties that are involved in a commercial transaction is that they want their disputes to be resolved quickly inefficiently and effectively you know they want their disputes to 
to, to be heard and resolved quickly. This is because sometimes we're talking about some goods that are expi- uh, that expire. This is because sometimes for me to conduct business with someone else, maybe I have gone to take a loan somewhere. And so if we have a dispute and the court delays it, then it makes me as a business person continue suffering, you know. So um, commercial law attempts to facilitate commercial transactions by endeavoring to meet the special needs of business community. So um, we're also going to talk about the freedom of contract and sanctity of contract. Of course, from what we've talked about, um, we definitely know that um, on a large scale, for you to conduct large scale commercial transaction, a contract is very important. And of course, another important thing to know is that there's a freedom of contract. You can sit down with someone and agree to this and this and this. You have that freedom. So um, the basis of commercial law is the contractual principle of autonomy of the party's will, subject to the ultimate reservation of public policy. The parties are free to arrange their affairs as they like. So this is all about the will theory. And of course, when we talk about the will theory, the will theory sees contract as a representation of the will of the people and therefore worth of recognition as such. This theory asserts the value of individual judgment, collision, and the liberal principle on, the, on individual self-determination. So I'm also going to give you um, some few case laws. In printing and numerical registering company versus Samson, Sir George ruled that competent men and women of age shall have the liberty to contract and that courts of justice shall enforce contracts when such contracts are entered into. To freely. So according to this case law, what are we getting is that, for example, if you have sat down with someone and you have agreed to this condition and you have signed to it, the courts are going to enforce those contracts as they are, especially if that contract was entered freely. Um, in Photo Production Limited versus Security Limited, Lord Diplock held that contracting parties are at liberty to decide the terms that they want to abide by and that this was the basic principle of commercial law of, of contract. So what is Lord, Lord Diplock saying here? Lord Diplock is saying that anyone who is sitting down to come up with an agreement or a contract, they are at a liberty to decide what terms do they want to abide by. You know, so we continue with Balting Shipping Company versus Dillion. Um, where Brennan said, says that a contract enables parties to create rights and obligations that will govern their contracts. So, for example, where I am giving you my motor vehicle so that you can conduct your taxi business, if we sit down and decide to um, come up with a contract, of course, we'll have to talk about which rights do you have as the person who is borrowing this car, which rights, which obligations do you have as the person I'm giving, uh, you, I'm giving this car, you know? There is, of course, some of the obligations are, of course, you need to take care of the car. You need to make sure that, you know, it is in a, in, in a good state that they have given you such things. So a contract is there to enable parties to create rights and obligations that will govern their contract. Of course, um, we're also going to talk about the predictability of legal decisions on commercial law. And um. The courts, of course, have held that there is no need, there is a need for certainty in commercial decisions. Definitely, there is a need of certainty in commercial decisions. One of the most important cases of here is Vallejo versus Wheeler. Lord Mansfield said, in all mercantile transactions, the great object should be certainty, and therefore, it is more consequence that the rule be certain that whether the rule is established one way or the other, because speculators in trade then know what ground. To start to go upon this is very important so for example if i'm seated here and um, i sell electronics it is very important for me to understand and to be certain on what does the law say about electronic um, me selling electronic equipment the law is very clear on selling counterfeit products of course such certainty is able to help the business person run their business in in a, in, in a very comfortable way because they know they're not breaking any law. And if they're breaking the law, then they know then I should correct. I should not do this and I should not do that. Vallejo versus Willa is a very important case law. So what are the what is the philosophy of commercial law? Um, one of the philosophy of commercial law, of course, is part autonomy. What do we mean when we say part autonomy? Businessmen should be free to make their own law as, as it involves entering in contracts. Just like I have said previously, 
as a business person you are free to come up with any rights and obligations that are supposed to govern the transactions that you're entering into as long as of course when the party is signing to that contract they did it freely now that is exactly what we mean when we say part autonomy the next philosophy is going to be predictability i have said earlier that the predictability of the law is very important judicial decisions of commercial transactions should be predictable so that the business people on the ground know where they stand the next philosophy of commercial law is flexibility commercial law should be flexible enough to accommodate new practices and development so this is very clear i have given an example of how like 10 year 20 years ago or 10 years ago doing transactions on mpesa was unheard of you had to go to the bank make a queue come up with a check and all that so commercial law should be flexible enough to accommodate the new practices and development as we know modern technology is evolving every now and then this happens as well in the business fraternity so flexibility is a very important philosophy in commercial law good faith is also an important philosophy in commercial law good faith what do we mean when we talk about good faith this is to say in provision of information and dispute resolution among other areas of commercial law good faith is very important for example if you're resolving a dispute good faith is an important philosophy in commercial law because if you're providing information regarding something good faith is an is an important philosophy in commercial law the encouragement of self help what do we mean when we say um that an important philosophy of commercial law is the encouragement of self help this is acceleration clauses can be invoked contracts can be terminated or rescinded goods can be repossessed liens and rights of contractual self help be exercised receivers and managers are appointed and of course the, all this can be done without the need of judicial approval so this is to say for example if i have made a contract between person a and person b person b and we have decided that i will be delivering the goods on the 5th of every month and you on the other hand you're supposed to always pay on that 5th or maybe even earlier you know if you do not pay and i have already delivered the goods one of the self help method i can do is that i can come and collect my goods back because you've been unable to pay and of course i do not need judicial approval for that you know and of course another thing is that we can have termination clauses on contracts so you know if you if, if for example you do not abide by what the contract is saying the contract can be terminated all this thing that that is what we mean that that is one of the philosophy of commercial law however it's very important to take note that self help can sometimes be risky you know sometimes you would rather even go the judicial way if you feel like the self self help method is not going to work well for you the next philosophy is the facilitation of security aspects security can be taken in the form of assets tangible or intangible usually with little or no formality so what do we need what do we mean when we say the facilitation of self security aspect this is to say that for example um you have gone to the bank and you have you have um borrowed a loan and you have placed your title deed as security once you do not pay the loan as the contract says or as how you agreed with the bank people the bank can feel free to come and you know sell the land you know take take possession of your assets you know that one aspect asset that you placed on top of the table and you said you know what if i do not pay this loan feel free to take this asset so the facilitation of the security aspect is a very it's a very important philosophy in commercial law and especially in the business in in the banking fraternity or rather in the financial industry so the next um important philosophy in commercial law is the protection of vested rights um what do we mean w- when we talk about this we 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 we're generally saying that an owner should not lose property without fault you know the protection of vested rights an owner this is self explanatory an owner should not lose property without fault that is one of the most important philosophy in commercial law the next one is the protection of innocent third parties innocent buyers should not be protected again should rather i'm sorry innocent buyers should be protected against proprietary rights 
of which they have no notice in order to ensure the free flow of goods in the stream of trade. So what do we mean when we see the protection of innocent third parties? I came to you as a seller who sells autos, that is um, cars, and um, you sell to me a car. Then I find out later that probably you had already sold to person A, but person A had not picked. Um, commercial law is really vigilant on the protection of innocent third parties. However, as you're going to understand it later on, is that, of course, um, when you buy stolen goods, there is no excuse. You know, that that law is um, very clear in our penal code. And so, but one of the philosophy of commercial law is the protection of innocent third parties. Okay, so um, I really appreciate you for listening till this end. Feel free to subscribe. Feel free to listen, to continue listening in later and of course i hope i really hope to join you in the next lesson and um thank you so much feel free to also get in touch my email address is there in case you're a law student and you would want more notes on it feel free to inbox me thank you and see you in our next lesson bye